that when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, right? And here you are, such a nice looking group. Quite a few visitors with us today, and we are very happy to have you here. That makes it even more special for us with what is taking place during this service. You are protecting yourselves from the heat, I hope.
God Almighty face to face. And we need our time, our way. And so as we continue with our worship, let us do so in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins unto God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God has exactly done that. In his mercy, Almighty God has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. And so as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Be seated, please. <clears throat> Seraphim with their wings cover their faces, hide their feet, and they fly, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory.
thing. A humility like that of a little child. The graces of childlike faith receive the all good things as gracious gifts from our Father in heaven. Apart from such faith, Jesus said, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. But whoever is humble like a little child will be the greatest in that kingdom. Although in our sin we deserve to be drowned in the depth of the sea, we have instead been drowned or buried with Christ in baptism, and then raised to the new humble life of a child of God. In honor of the Lord Jesus and his gospel, if and as you are able, please stand. And it is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 20. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, Jesus put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out, throw it away. It is best for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. And see that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does that man not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? But if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over that one more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. And so it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Now if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him, alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. And let us share our Christian faith with each other as we speak the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated, please. And as we continue, we're going to continue with our prayers for today. Because of the installation that is taking place in the service. We moved 
buckle things around. So after the prayers, we will continue with the service for Holy Communion as on a normal site. So we join our hearts together in prayer. this morning is, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, we just heard you promise that if two of us are agreed upon anything here on earth in your name, it will be done for us. And you also remind us that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are right there in the midst of them. And so we ask you, O oh Lord, to hear the prayers of your people and grant our supplications. As your people, O oh Lord, we ask that you would grant us courage and wisdom so that we may speak your word in every proper way, that we may call more and more people to repentance for the forgiveness of their sin, that they may rejoice and enjoy that forgiveness even as we do. Be with your people to serve us with the gifts of your word and sacrament. May we use those things faithfully to strengthen our faith and our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. O oh Lord, this is an election year. How can we miss that? And we pray that you would give us good and honest leaders who will govern us according to your word and your will. Give us grace to pray for those who do lead us and to be good citizens and good neighbors to one another. Give peace to the nations. Bless the men and women and the families of our armed forces. Bring an end to violence, prejudice, racism. Guide us to know and respect all of life. From the infant in the womb to the youth reaching maturity, and from the mature to the aged. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, you have shown yourself to be the strength of the weak, the healing of the sick, the comfort of those who grieve and the peace of those who are near death. Hear us on behalf of all who are ill or injured. Hear us on behalf of the victims of wildfires and floods, hurricanes and tornadoes. Deliver us from pandemic and pestilence, from crime and disaster, from danger and violence. Sustain your people in the middle of their afflictions and keep us in the Christian faith so that we may be preserved through this earthly life and finally be received into the blessed rest of the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And teach us, O oh Lord, to forgive others as you have forgiven us. Then bless the fellowship of the forgiven. Look with divine favor upon Concordia Christian School, all of its faculty and staff and volunteers, all of its students and families, and grant success to every method of teaching and learning. Bless us as we commune today upon the body and blood of our Savior in, with, and under these forms of bread and wine. Then help us to live out in our lives all of that love, forgiveness, and hope that you give us in your beloved Son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all of these things and whatever else is necessary among us, hear us, O oh God, in the words that Jesus taught your children to pray. We stand to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive all those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Traditionally, on and in the service of an installation, the pastor is not expected to preach. This last week, as we were preparing for this installation service, I turned to Dad and said, Well, do you want me to preach this coming Sunday? I'd like to say he didn't hesitate at all and immediately jumped in and said, by all means, yes. 
But I don't know, I think the mind was kind of going a little bit, wondering, well, perhaps he might give payback for previous sermons through the years. But Dad did finally say yes. So before we continue with the installation itself, this is going to be the sermon. It is titled, Directed by God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and also from our risen and living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 30 years ago, on June 24, 1990, some of the Jenks family was gathered at St. Paul's Lutheran Church all the way up in Minot, North Dakota, including five Jenkses that are present in this worship this morning. Dad, Mom, myself, my wife Michelle, and my little sister Betsy. It was because I was being ordained as a pastor in my home church by my dad, and for the sermon, Dad at one point had me come stand next to the pulpit and he pulled out book after book after book and had me hold them as he continued in the sermon. The sermon was titled, Your Court of Final Resort talking not about the various theology books, the doctrinal books, but our court of final resort being our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Since Dad had books 30 years ago, I brought along some books. I'm not going to make Dad hold any of those. I brought along two books. The first one happens to be the biggest book in my possession. Not only is this a holy Bible, this is the Jenks family Bible. It was given to Nelson Treat and Eliza Jenks, your grandma and grandpa, they got married in May of 1881. This Bible was given to them as a gift, I believe from one of their aunts, if I'm reading it correctly, in September of 1881. And this Bible has been in the family's possession ever since then. It records various births and deaths. My grandpa, your dad, he is listed in here. And how many of us have a family Bible? Okay, mo most of us have a family Bible. I'm going to set this one to the side for a moment and pull out the second book which is also a Bible. This one's not quite as old. This is from May of 1978, a Thompson red letter chain reference Bible that was given to me by my parents at my confirmation. And in the front is a page that was written by dad at that point already when I was confirmed, I was thinking I was going to become a pastor. He mentions that in here. But then he also talks about how the words of this book, the Bible, are about the word, Jesus Christ. Remember what he has done, is doing, and promises to do for you. And throughout the pages of Scripture, we find story after story, account after account of how things are being
being directed by God. And at times, even in the midst of people's sinfulness, their shortfallings, they're trying to take things into their own hands, God still works through that. Several weeks ago, our epistle reading was from Romans chapter 8, where Paul reminds us that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And in these pages of scripture, directed by God, oh boy, we, we'd be here until next Sunday. Somebody actually, before the worship service, saw the big family Bible and said, are you going to read the whole thing? And I said, I just might have to. But when we take a look from Adam and Eve down through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, the Israelites, all the various kings, starting with Saul, then David, then Solomon, and then his son Rehoboam and Jeroboam, who took over the southern kingdom, and the names go on and on. But when we take a look at the big picture in Holy Scripture, it's all about the Savior being directed by God. Paul records in Galatians, I'm going to use a different version. I love the way this version states it. When the time was right for God, he sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those under the law. Things being directed by God. How many of us have our own personal Bibles as well? Oh, yeah. Things being directed by God. It's not just a bunch of stories from these people who lived hundreds and even thousands of years ago. Even our own lives have been directed by God. Sixty years and two weeks ago, somewhere around August 21st through 23rd, in central Wisconsin, a town named Marshfield, they had a young vicar who was almost 23 years old who came there. And 60 years and two weeks ago, this young, almost 23-year-old vicar was introduced to a young 20-year-old Lutheran school teacher at that Lutheran school. Well, in case you're not sure who that is, that's who you're getting as pastor and his wife. They started dating, got engaged, got married in February of 1961. So this coming February, mom and dad will be celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary. After finishing up, Vicarage went back to St. Louis Seminary, being directed by God for the last year at the seminary. In the summer of 1963, being ordained in your home church in Kalamazoo, correct? No, Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then going to this isn't going to sound familiar to you, but for my wife and I, for our family, it is. Consberg, Arena, and McCluskey, North Dakota. Three congregations. And then being directed by God in January of 1966, 
becoming pastor of a church in St. Charles, Illinois, approximately 30 minutes from downtown Chicago, so in the greater Chicagoland area. And then in November of 1970, being directed by God, going back to North Dakota, to Sturm and Gwinner. How many of you have ever heard of Gwinner, North Dakota? Okay, other than my family. <laughs> How many of you have ever heard of the, these little tracker machineries, the Bobcats? Oh, yeah, all sorts of hands. Bobcats are made and manufactured in little Gwinner, North Dakota. That's where it started. And then they've opened up some other factories as well. Then in November of 1977, and you might want to keep track of how many congregations. <laughs> November of 1977, being directed by God, moving to Minot, North Dakota, to be pastor at St. Paul's. And then in December of 1998, your farewell up there, because you had accepted the call, and in January of 1999, he was installed as pastor over at Canoga Park Lutheran Church. A few members from Canoga Park here this morning. That's the only reason I'm in California. When, whenever my wife or her family asks, why are you up in California? I say, it's my dad's fault. <laughs> Because if he hadn't been there, I wouldn't have. You were there from 99 until 2006. And then dad retired, went up to San Jose, filled in for various pastors from August 2015 until, no, 2014 until June of 2015. He served as vacancy pastor of Canoga Park Lutheran, commuting from San Jose down here to the valley by way of Southwest. $49 one way if you purchase in advance. And no, I'm not getting any cut from Southwest for this. Install me as pastor at Canoga Park Lutheran on Father's Day 2015, three days shy of my 25th anniversary of ordination. Then in August, Christ the Life Lutheran Church up in San Jose came, contacted Dad and said, we're vacant. Would you be able to help us out? Directed by God. Dad said, sure. Then later on that fall, I think it was December or so, they decided to make that more permanent. Dad was 78 years old at the time. They called him to be their sole part-time pastor. And Dad commented saying, you know, Moses was 80 before God called him. Dad was only 78 at the time, so now you're making up for it. Well, I'm not sure of the rest of the story. So, yeah, you, you folks here at Our Savior First, if you want to pray that Pastor KC James, Lives to be as old as Moses? <laughs> well, God directing things all of a sudden back in February of this year, the landlord where mom and dad had been renting for 12 years, their conditions changed. Landlord decided to sell the property. It's up in Silicon Valley where property values believe it or not, are two to three times higher than in the Los Angeles area. And so mom and dad, uh, we've got to move. They started looking for homes.
was in Simi, put a bid on one that wasn't accepted, put a bid on a second one, it was accepted. Some of us kids helped them move this time, they're settled in at Simi. But even before dad came down, at that point you had the vicar, but your chairman of elders contacted me, I think it was in March, and saying, well, Pastor Jenks, I think after Easter we're going to have to sit and start chatting about what our options are when that vicarage is over. And I said, you know, funny thing, I know a retired pastor who's coming back to the area. But there was an additional comment I believe I put in there. If not, I should have put it in there. We'll see what God is going to do in all of this. Well, directed by God, we started filling in as transitional pastor, vacancy pastor, whatever term you want to use on August 2nd. You had a congregational meeting and directed by God, you called him to be your pastor. Directed by God, he accepted that. And now, well, one thing is going to remain the same. That is being directed by God. I've given you just a little bit of dad's and mom's history. You'll get to find out more as you continue on. I haven't given too much history of our Savior's first. That you will have the opportunity to do together in your visiting. I haven't given him any information on any of the individuals here. How God has been directing your life. You get to share that with dad and each other. Why? For each one of us. As an individual, and then each of the congregations that we are at, whether it was all those that dad has served over at Canoga Park Lutheran here at Our Savior First, we continue to be directed by God. We base everything we say and do. On these words, as time and time again, we are reminded not only are our lives directed by God, but even our salvation, that forgiveness and eternal life that Jesus won for each and every one of us. That has especially been directed by God. It's going to be fun to see in the upcoming months, years, if you live as old as Moses, then I can say decades. We don't know what the Lord has in store for us. But we do know that he is the one directing things. And so as we continue with the official installation now, we keep that always in our minds. God, how are you directing us? You know, that's a good way to start out every single day. God, how are you going to direct me throughout this day? Even in the midst of some of the difficulties I might have, even in the midst of what's going on in this world, even in the midst of the sins that we might be committing that day, well, we know God directs it through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we place ourselves as a congregation and as individuals in God's loving, caring, and providing arms. Amen. Amen. 
And now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith, remembering that our lives as individuals and our life as a congregation is directed by God's loving, caring, and providing arms. Amen. We begin this part of the installation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, through the church's usual order, the Reverend Kenneth Charles Jenks has been called by the Lord of the church to be pastor of our Savior First Lutheran Church of Granada Hills as a part of the Pacific Southwest District in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. O Almighty God, by your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, you have taken care of providing forgiveness and eternal life. Throughout the history of the church, Lord, we also see how you provide congregations and also faithful shepherds for those congregations. We ask that you would be with both Pastor Jenks and our congregation, our Savior First, Granada Hills. Grant us wisdom to follow in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We turn back to the words of Scripture to see how things are directed by God. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus came and spoke to his disciples, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the ages. In Luke's Gospel we hear Jesus saying to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Paul writes to the Christians at Ephesus, Our Lord gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the building up of the body of christ and in his sermon on the mount jesus said you are the salt of the earth but if salt has lost its taste how shall its saltiness be restored it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I don't know if I've ever been able to, I 